Hello and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and I'm so happy you're going to join me today. I hope you can put your feet up and relax and watch this tutorial about white craft ink and some of the techniques that we can use this wonderful ink for. So today is episode 106 of Paper Crafting Playdate. It is November 17th, 2023. Whether you're watching this live or you're watching this years in years later, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me and I hope you learned something new. So we are going to first just chat a little bit, take a look at some cards. You don't want to participate in that. You're watching this on the replay. You just fast forward. But I'm going to take a look at the stamp table here and say hello to my stamping friends. And I need to share some amazing cards. All right, so if you're watching this live, uh, definitely say hello to your stamping friends in the chat and find out where you guys are from and what you're doing today on this fall Friday. And if you are watching this later, uh, go ahead and chat with me because I read every comment and I try to respond to every comment eventually as well. So take a look at this first little Thanksgiving card. This is for my friend Sherry. She created one of the accordion tent folds. It has this amazing little accordion front and then that little extra card. This was last year's fall paper, which was so yummy. Look at that beautiful white pumpkin, Sherry. I love this card so much. And I love that I was with you when you filled this out before you mailed it to me. Thank you so much. And look at this adorable little Thanksgiving wreath. This is from Wanda. Got that cute little turkey in the middle. So cute. I love the little foil paper that you put behind there to make it sparkle. So cute. Thank you very much, Wanda. Love it, love it. This is for my friend Jill. She used the Give It a Whirl dies that create this little uh, circle that turns. And she colored some cute little pilgrims and embossed that beautiful leaf embossing folder and cut out some leaves. This is so cute. I love that. I wish I had a little kid that I could share this with because I think, well, I'm enjoying it, aren't I? <laughs> uh, we're all little kids when it comes to these little whirly things, aren't we? I love it. Thank you so much, Jill. And uh, this is from another Jill. This is a Jill that I just met recently and she made this card for me. <clears throat> Look at all these beautiful stitched shapes. She used triangles and circles and created this beautiful little scene. Um, it's so cool. I love, love, love this Jill. And I love all the colors you put together with the greens and the blues. It's just beautiful. Love it. Hi, Ginger. I miss our little stamp camp. I'm still glowing from how wonderful that was, Ginger. Thank you so much for letting me be part of it. Look at this amazing blue card. This is from Sherry. And she used all these beautiful pieces. I always forget the name of that paper. Countryside Inn paper and made this little beautiful little focal point cluster here. This is gorgeous, Sherry. Thank you so much for sending it to me. Love it, love it, love it. This is also from Jill <laughs> and she sent me a birthday card and she created this beautiful scene. You are killing it with the uh, nature um, cards. They're so beautiful. I love that. Love the little deer, everything. So cool. Oh, I'm so excited. Jeannie and Julie, you have the pad, the white craft pad, and you've never used it. Oh my goodness, you are gonna be so excited about today's projects, I hope. That's the plan. Um, this is a great pad. Thank you, Jill, this is gorgeous. This is from my bestie, Claudia. She made me a birthday card using the um, template that we did last week, template 20 stacked rectangles and she used this um, scenery paper from a couple years ago 
made me a purple card because she knows I love purple. Isn't it beautiful? She sent it through the embossing folder. Oh my goodness, this is just gorgeous. Hi, Anita. Hi, Sandra. All right, this is from Barb, and she created this little birthday card for me with a cute little tag. Isn't that sweet? She used the inked botanicals and just created this little cute little pocket card. I love it. And that's on the front, but then there's also room to write on the inside. So lovely. This is such a good idea, Barb. I love it. Love that paper too. And then lastly, this was dropped off by one of my local butterfly friends, Mimi. Thank you so much. This just tickled me, made my whole day. Um, so she made it purple and she put butterflies on here for our, that's the name of my stamping group, the Butterfly Friends. And she made me this inside accordion fold. Remember when we did these? There's a video on that. And she put, this is a congratulations card because I made it into um, the top 50 of the category Stampin' Up! has for achievers, for demonstrators who um, achieve certain things. And so she put my numbers in there for the different categories. And then um, this was my overall number. Now, I wish this was a birthday card and that's how old I was turning. Maybe not. Maybe I don't want to go back to my 20s. Maybe 38. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Would you go back? I don't know. 38 sounds kind of nice right now. Um, but I'm, I love what she wrote. She said, these are not your measurements, but your achievements. So glad you're my creative card making guru. <laughs> Mimi, so sweet. Honestly, I'd be okay with these being my measurements. That'd be, that'd be, uh, <laughs> be better than what it is. Oh, so sweet of you, Mimi. Thank you so much. You made my whole day. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. You guys don't realize when you send me those cards, they go into this beautiful basket that I have so that I can look at them over and over again. All right, so let's first talk about this month's Hostess Code. You're earning the amazing Wink of Stella brush that puts a little bit of shimmer and sparkle on your um, whatever you want kind of works like a little paintbrush and it's just this beautiful shimmer. You have to use the hostess code um, unless you're ordering more than $150, but you use the hostess code, you spend the minimum of $50 and then I send this to you next month. Okay, White Craft Ink. All right, if you haven't used your pad, this is going to be your call to action to get it out and use it. So this is called Craft White Ink. It's on page 137 in the annual catalog. It's number four here, this one right here. So it doesn't even look really like it's hard to see that this would be Craft Ink. Um, when you purchase it for the first time, it's $10.50 and it comes uninked with a reinker. And the reason is um, because it's pigment ink, you want it to be fresh when you use it. Okay, so it comes on the same kind of foam pad that our dye, our all the other classic inks are dye-based inks. This is a pigment-based ink. And so that is a different way for the color to um, kind of react to the cardstock. Pigment ink is really thick and it's um, a different way to make the color. It actually sits on top of the cardstock when it dries instead of soaking in like the dye inks, which are water-based. And so what it allows you to do is different techniques. It also allows this lighter color to dry on top of the cardstock and give you some amazing results. So when you get it, now mine is already inked a couple times, but when you get it, it will be a blank um, ink pad and your job will be to ink it up. So I'm just gonna re-ink mine because I've been using it like crazy getting ready for this video. So we're gonna add ink. So when you first do it, it's going to take you a little bit of time to do it because it's a slow process. So I'm putting that 
um, re-anchor just kind of right over the pad and it's gonna slowly soak in. I can already see it starting to soak in. So now I went in one direction and I'm gonna go in the other direction. You see how it's, it's what I first did is soaking in. You don't wanna over ink it, but when you do this for the very first time, you're gonna to have to just apply several applications. All right, so now that I've got, so I'm just re-inking this, it's already inked, so I'm only, I'm gonna stop there because I don't want it to be too inky. And a really good thing to do to help it, um, you can use the tip, the rounded tip of your bottle and just kind of work it in like that. That works really well, but a little bit faster way um, is to take something that's rounded. So I can use Stampin' Up's acrylic blocks because they're nice and round. And you can just really gently kind of spread those little ink. Um, this will help the ink to mix in evenly. All right, so you can see like that. And then there's just a little bit of ink left on there. I'm going to wipe most of it off and then clean off my block. You can also use like a really um, soft plastic spoon. You could use um, your bone folder. You definitely want to protect the foam pad and use something that is rounded so you don't accidentally tear that foam. Okay, so now that that's inked, we are going to make some amazing things. Okay, so I'm going to stand up and we're going to get busy. So I'm calling this part one of White Craft Ink Magic because there are so many different uh, techniques and th ways that you can use this pad that there's really too many for one video. So we're going to have a couple videos, but maybe not in a row because I've got other things I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to start with some snowflakes. So when it gets to be this time of year around the holidays, I can't wait to use some snowflakes to stamp and it's so much fun. And one of my very favorite things to do is to just stamp some snowflakes with my white craft pad. So I'm going to take the three different detailed uh, snowflake images from this stamp set. So this is actually a two-step stamping stamp set. So you can create kind of a shadow um, or a first layer in one color, and then you can create a second detailed image on top of that, or you can make your snowflakes, um, you know, more bold. So it's a very versatile little stamp set, but I'm gonna use the detailed ones. And we're going to create a background. So one of the you know, I, this is my favorite thing to do with white craft ink, to be honest. I'm just going to put all three of those on there. And because this is photopolymer, I'm going to give it a little cushion with my piercing pad here. Okay, so we're going to ink this up. And because it's, you know, a pigment ink, it's going to be thicker little sticky, so you want to still be very gentle when you tap, tap, tap on there. And then we're going to, we could stop right here. This, you could just stop and go get your white craft pad and do this. This is so much fun. I don't know why, it just is. White on any dark color. So the white craft ink does look better on a darker cardstock, but you can use it on any color. Let's see, I'll turn it this way. I'm just creating a background overall. Now you see how it's starting to dry. You can see a little bit of difference in the white ink when it first stamps to when it dries. Okay, so this is perfection right here. I could do this, I could stamp this all day long. Now, it 
is not a bright white when you stamp it. It's more opaque. And so it a lot of times just kind of takes on a little bit of the color of the cardstock that you use and it kind of tones down that white a little so it makes a beautiful subtle background. Okay, let me clean off my stamps. So when I clean this ink because it is so thick, I like to use my stamp and scrub. And so I just have this nice and wet and I'm gonna clean it off. And then I, the other side is dry. Okay. This is gonna be a monochromatic card, pretty much. So this is real red. So I'm gonna put it on a white, thick, basic white card just to make that white kind of pop. And then all we need is a simple little um, greeting. So I'm going to use a tag. I'm going to take this Make the Season Sparkle. And stamp my tag. And then to make it coordinate, we'll take our real red and we'll put some red snowflakes on our tag. So I'm gonna do one full strength and then I'm gonna stamp off. And do a couple lighter red snowflakes. Okay, so this is the first technique. We're going to talk about five different things in this video. The first one is just a simple background. Just stamp a background in anything. Okay, so I already made this big bow it's a little too big. This is some ribbon on in the online store. Has a little bit of gold in it. So Judy, that's an excellent question. She's asking how long does the white craft ink take to dry completely? So um, it's dry now. So what is that about five minutes? Um, it also depends on how inky your pad is, right? If you if you if you've got it really, really inky, it might take a little bit longer. But this is dry. Um, it, it, if you want to speed it up, you can use your heat tool um, to dry it. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of since this ribbon has a little of the gold in it, I'm going to add just another couple little pops of gold. I stamped, I'm sorry, I punched the layering leaves and we'll just stick a couple of those under to make it Okay, super simple card, but the snowflakes are just a wow. They don't have to be complicated. These are the brushed metallic dots and we have some gold, so we'll just add Kind of carry the have three little pops of gold. Okay, so that's our first technique is a background. Let's put the red away. Let me 
hold that up close so you can see the sparkle and the red. So you see how the opaque, um, how it dries kind of opaque like that and it actually is not a bright white, but it kind of almost looks um, pink on red. So you'll kind of notice that it'll kind of absorb some of the color. Yes, the leaves are from the bow punch. I think I, I said it wrong. I said the stamp set is called layering leaves. Um, the punch is the bow punch. All right, so here is a very similar card with um, Azure Afternoon. And the difference here is once it dried, I sent it through the snowflake embossing folder. And then I added um, some different silver accents to it, but basically the same um, technique in blue. And then I wanted to see how these beautiful translucent florals looked in white, and I was not disappointed. I stamped them on Starry Sky cardstock, and then again I sent it through an embossing folder, the Time Worn Type. So you can see on this card, it almost the, the white almost looks blue, but when you use pops of white, um, either as your card base or as your focal point, it helps to draw um, draw your eyes to the white. This one made me very excited. And then I used the Sending Cheer um, stamp set, and I wanted to use the little gingerbread uh, boy as a background. So it's just um, it's just so easy to, you know, this is just a one layer card, but when you make a fun background like that and you just kind of repeat, repeat whatever you did in the background on your um, little focal point, it's, it's easy, it's stunning. These are all almost, these two are definitely monochromatic, but these are very close to being monochromatic cards, right? Just one, one kind of color. Okay, so let's just try one more thing with this background. Okay, so this is a brand new stamp set in the online store. It's an online exclusive that was released a couple weeks ago, maybe last week. I don't know, time's... Time's getting away from me. Softly said, I love this. I love that it looks um, kind of distressed. It looks like it was handwritten. Um, I love the font and it's beautiful. Nice, big, bold greetings. And so um, the other thing that I like is that it has, these coordinate together. So if you kind of just think about it, you want to send a card to somebody Thinking of you is just such a perfect greeting because it, it covers every occasion. So um, no matter when you're sending the card or for what occasion, you can put thinking of you as your main greeting. And then these can all be um, also used like in the background. So that's what I did. So I'm thinking of you just because. I'm thinking of you, you are loved. I'm thinking of you, celebrate. Uh, it's your birthday. I'm thinking of you. Thank you. So I kind of played out with that and I made, um, I stamped a background on basic black cardstock and I just did the just because over and over again. I just layered it. And I'm going to put this on a bubble bath card base. All right, so the other thing that you can do with this ink pad is you can emboss with it and you can um, use embossing powder. So I'm gonna take the thinking of you, just like I said, that's gonna be my main greeting on this tag, and then we're going to emboss it. So if you haven't heat embossed before, 
very easy. You have to have a sticky ink so that your powder will stick to it. So the White Craft ink works very well, especially if you're embossing with white. It just goes well together. This is the main ink when I emboss. I usually use the Versamark. And it does actually, the Versamark creates a little bit crisper um, image if you're going to emboss. But if you're already playing with your white pad and it's already out, then you're good to go. So um, Stampin' Up! has a little embossing um, additions kit that comes with this little embossing buddy. And you wanna definitely put that down on your cardstock first because that takes away any oils from your fingers or static electricity that might let the powder um, stick where you don't want it to go. Then you ink your stamp and stamp. So I could leave it like this, um, but I want it to be a little bit brighter. Okay, so this is how you make your white brighter, is you use some white embossing powder, and this comes in a little jar, and I just, I keep mine in a drawer in these little containers so I can just really quickly, I don't have to open up the jar, I can just pour it on and dump it right back in. Okay, so nothing sticks because I used that embossing buddy. Um, the little kit comes with this little brush, so if you feel like you got some little pieces that you don't want there, you can brush them off. And then it has this lovely little um, thing to hold your paper so you don't burn your hands. All right, so we're going to emboss this. You want to make sure your heat tool is about at a 45 degree angle. Let's see if you can see it this way so that the heat kind of shoots across. And then you'll see it start to melt. Once it melts, you just move on to the next spot. It goes a little faster if you hold it at an angle instead of holding it directly up and down. Okay, so there's our little tag. So because this is black and white, you can kind of do, this is kind of like an extra, I didn't really uh, count this one, but it's a little extra. You can take, um, you can make it look like a chalkboard, okay? So you can take a finger dauber, a little sponge, and you can just um, add a little bit of the, of the white craft ink back on, especially if you're using black. And then what I like to do is take a little piece of cloth. And this is just a little piece of, of diaper from a long time ago. And then I kind of just smear it before it dries. And it gives you that effect of, of, a, of a messy chalkboard. All right, so let's put this card together. I already created a little focal point with my bow. I cut out another tag on this piece of um, paper. That is from the Bright and Beautiful. And so I, I layered two tags together to make the card. I attached some pink ribbon and some gingham ribbon. Okay, so just stamping a background with your white craft pad, that's technique number one. And then embossing is technique number two. And let's add some little pink sequins here. Like that. Okay, who's inking up their white cloth tab right now? I mean, I suppose you can wait. You don't want to miss anything. All right, so here is this little card. Okay, 
so far so good. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use our white craft pad with an embossing folder. So I'm gonna take a piece of Knight of Navy because it's nice and dark and I'm going to emboss it with this folder, which I did not label, so I can't tell you the exact name of it, but it goes with the Countryside Inn and the Country Corners Suite. So this is not a 3D, so the sandwich goes with in between plates three and three on the base plate. scratch paper back. Okay, so I have embossed the Knight of Navy. And so on the side that is raised, now you can either, you can take a sponge or your finger dauber and you can just real gently work yourself around and highlight just the tops of those, um, of where it's raised up. Um, I'm gonna do it with the direct to paper technique because that is a little bit faster. Um, and I just, I, I, I think it like goes a little faster. So the way that you do that is you start off of your paper and you hold your ink pad at about probably 30 degrees and you just want this edge right here that is closest to the end of the pad so you wouldn't want to use this one where you pull you want to use the other side and you just drag it really lightly over the top so I'm not even pressing I'm just letting it flow and it's just gonna stick or um, attach to what's raised up. Uh, isn't that pretty? Okay, so this is a, uh, any way you can use with any embossing folder um, just to give it a little bit of oomph or to make it stand out a little bit more. Thank you, Susan. Countryside Blossoms embossing folder is what I am using here. I appreciate that so much. Okay, let's make a card out of this. So again, because the white craft ink tends to is that has that opaque quality, um, I'm going to kind of go with how this makes the makes it appear almost blue instead of white. And so my card base, I'm going to do boho blue. And look how that just goes together so nicely. So that's our card base. Honestly, you just need a greeting because it's so beautiful. I um, took the time because I wanted to play with this set again. This is in the annual catalog, Cottage Wreaths. There's a die set and a stamp set, and it's so pretty. So I just had to play with it. So I've already cut out all my pieces when we just have to create a little focal point here. And I wanted to just, um, you know, I don't necessarily think of the holidays with this embossing folder, but I wanted to just think outside the box and do a little bit different um, kind of holiday card. Um, so 
I picked, uh, like I always like a red, blue, green combination. It always looks good. So you can adjust those a little bit. So I've got like a red, blue, green, right? Even though that's mauve, um, it kind of falls into the, the reds category. So if you end up with streaks, um, just keep practicing because you, you have to have a, just a really, really light touch. Um, Karen. And so don't worry about that. Um, and maybe your pad is very inky too. So just keep playing with it. It does make a difference, Sandra, you're right. So a 3D embossing folder, um, it, it has a little bit more dimension. It really depends on the pattern. And I'll show you one where I thought it didn't quite have enough. Um, in a minute. So here's my wreath. This is in boho blue. And I'm, again, this is just going to be a simple little card. And then our bow is in booty mauve. And then we're going to put a little grating over here. And then I cut out these little pine sprigs. Just tuck them around our bow. All right, so we just have a real simple little wreath there. And I'm probably gonna go back and add a little bit of bling, but let's put some of these pearls around here. Give it a little shine. Might add a little ribbon. Let's see how these look. Yes, I like that. And then we'll put a big one right here on the bow. Okay, very simple. But again, we are keeping it simple because the background is, is stealing the show here. So I did the same one on Berry Burst. So you can see the darker the cardstock, um, the more it's going to stand out, but it still works on kind of a medium color. Okay, so here is the um, delightful doily on basic black. And this is not a 3D. I mean, this one wasn't either, but this one is so dainty. Um, you can see, um, Karen, I, I got some streaks on there too. Um, so it does make a difference which folder you're using, how accurately you can get it to just stick on the top. So just play with your, your different folders. So this wreath is boho blue, and this is moody mauve, and soft sea foam are the little sprigs there. Okay, so let's look at some other cards. So I wanted to play with Mary and Bright, and I used the music notes folder on blueberry bushel to create that one. Again, kind of a non-traditional red, blue, green, a different red, blue, green, but they are so happy together. If you pick any red, any blue, any green, I tell you what, it works every time.
And then I wanted to play with the Christmas Tidings folder. And I came up with this one I wanted to keep doing over and over again. <laughs> but this is on Shaded Spruce. And I used the um, pieces that come in the sending cheer to finish these off. So there's this little tag, there's a Santa hat in um, the dies, and you've got this present. So these are, these made me so happy. That's a fun folder. And then lastly, I used one of the smaller folders. comes in a two pack, makes these little stripes here. So I just did some, so you can see on a lighter color, this is Coastal Cabana. You still see that white pop. It still makes your embossing folder image look um, uh, enhanced, I guess is the word, um, but it is more subtle than when you do it on a darker color. And this, I used this So Very Merry um, the little bells on that little stained glass stamp set. Also non-traditional colors here. Okay, so that is technique three, I believe, using an embossing folder and coloring with the white craft pad over the embossed image. Okay, let's move on. This one might be my favorite. We'll see here. Okay, so I'm gonna use the merriest of trees and I have these two tree images. And we're going to do a technique called shadow stamping. All right, so. <clears throat> Debbie, that's a great question. Debbie's asking, can you just ink <clears throat> the folder and have the same outcome? Um, I wish I would have saved the one. Not always. <clears throat> you can ink the flat side of the folder and then you get the like the um, depressed or the debossed part. You can get that white, um, but it depends on the folder. Like I did it with, I tried to do that with this stamp set and then it was backwards um, when I did it. So you have to play with that. But yes, um, try that because that's fun too. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is stamp the tree on pecan pie in our craft ink. Okay, then I'm going to clean that off. And then I'm going to stamp it again, but this time in pecan pie. So this is called shadow stamping because you're creating a shadow with your image. So I'm gonna line it up exactly, and this is easiest to do with a photopolymer stamp set if you want it to be kind of precise. So I'm gonna, I'm, I can see the white underneath, and then I'm just gonna move it to the side. You can go left or right, and then I'm gonna move it up or down, just a tiny bit, and re-stamp. And so you get a shadow. I 
I made a little masking thing here for the bottom because I want to stamp um, it's not sticking to my craft ink. I want to stamp the the uh, <laughs> stump of the tree. Okay, so now, so this is basic shadow stamping. You really only need these two steps. And I probably moved it a little bit too much. You want just a little bit left, a little bit, you know, showing. But this is actually a two-step tree. It has this um, delightful little highlights. So we're going to do one more step. And we're going to emboss. I'm going to use that embossing buddy again. And that's going to help dry that so that my powder doesn't stick everywhere, hopefully. So I'm going to ink the detailed and stamp over the top. Actually, I kind of really like how that looks tone on tone, but we'll go ahead and emboss it. I'm going to use white again. And that will make the white really pop. It does look 3D trunk. Thank you. I could not think of the, that word, Sandy. So having a heat tool is helpful when you're using pigment ink like the craft ink just because uh, it will you can actually heat heat the um, white pigment to, to fully dry before you would do anything else. Look at this cute little snowflake. I like that, very nice. Um, we're gonna make sure our trunk is not just floating and we'll just add, we'll do a little bit of that white down there. Okay, so let's put this card together and then we'll finish it off. So one of the things with this Merriest of Trees stamp set are the dies that you can use. And I took out some of the champagne sparkle paper. This is in the main catalog, it's called More Dazzle. It's champagne and gold. So I'm gonna use the champagne color because it goes really well with kind of the browns. And I already, so I, with on my piece, I put uh, some adhesive sheet on the back so that whatever I cut out of that will already be sticky. And so I took the star. And then this you can't really see because uh, until I pull them apart, but this piece right here creates the garland that you can separate and put on the tree. So I have already run that through the embossed machine. And so I have these cute little pull-offs here that are nice and sticky. And we're just gonna put those I wish decorating the tree in real life was this easy.
I always get twisted up in the garland. <laughs> oh, that is so much fun. It's really subtle. It's kind of like a little country country card. All right, let's put it together. I'm going to put a little bit of the pecan pie gingham in there. let that side go all the way closed. I'm going to just stick this in here, kind of right in the middle. This is just a one inch by four inch piece. Okay, lastly, we need a greeting. I'm going to use this um, long one here. And I'm going to use the card base color, which is early espresso. So I have all the colors. But still, it's kind of similar to monochromatic with the different shades of brown. Me too, Wendy. Pre-lit trees are the one of the greatest inventions ever. Okay, so we're gonna put that over here. I think I was gonna do a little bit of snowflakes over there. Okay, so that is our shadow stamping, which I didn't totally nail, but I think you get the idea. Let's hold that up close. Let's hold it in the camera. <laughs> you guys are so patient with me. A little sparkle on there. Okay, so the last technique or thing you can do is splatter with your ink. So you can either put a little dot of refill on um, your acrylic block or plastic plate, anything plastic. I just have my blocks here, so it makes it easy. You can actually just pick up some of the ink from your ink pad. And then you need a paintbrush um, with water. I'm using the um, water painters. This is the large one. So you just want to get it kind of the consistency of like half and half. So it's kind of watery, but still a little creamy. And then you just tap it. And I don't have enough. That was not coming off. Hold on. Let's do that again. There we go. See how it kind of looks like um, half and half or whipping cream? That's kind of the consistency you want. And then you just tap your finger. And you get little tiny dots of the craft ink, which will just kind of look like snow. Now, if you want them bigger, you get close, oops, <laughs> that's really close. You get closer. There's my little diaper friend. If you want them to be smaller, then you, you go far away. Oh, and it's already dried. 
Isn't that lovely? That's okay. Okay, so that's fun. You can do that on anything and it looks so pretty. Let's, let me show you another. This is the first one I made and I did it in shades of um, Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon. So you could kind of see uh, just two different completely, you know, tones for the tree, but they're both just so warm and cozy, aren't they? This one has gold. This one has the champagne. So much fun. See, I did a little bit better job on this one with my um, spacing, with my shadow stamping. It has a little bit smaller. This is kind of more what it's supposed to look like. Um, but again, I don't, I don't hate that. It looks fine. Here are those snowflakes with shadow stamping. And here are those beautiful softly said words. Now this is on a light cardstock, so you can see how it how it is a little bit um, little more subtle. This one's my favorite. <laughs> this is the leaf from Inked Botanicals. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the name of the paper. This is Inked and Tiled. It's this beautiful leaf right here. Stamp in the white first, and then you just offset and you stamp in the ink that's the same color as the cardstock. So tone on tone for the second. Stamp white, and then that. So here are more little splatters on this one. And then here is the Christmas classics. So here's with a detailed image. You can see how that looks when you offset and do a little shadow stamping. So I, I played with the cherry cobbler just to, to show you again. So this is these are both stamped in white craft ink, but then this um, this one added the white embossing powder. So you can see how it brightens it up, obviously, because the white powder is bright. Um, and how this in comparison almost looks like it's stamped in pink, right? <laughs> but when you put this with white, um, it brings out the white. So I always like to kind of do that. And then I just have a couple other samples with um, embossing, trying the shadow stamping. Um, it's a little bit different if you emboss um, in that, well, this one you can hardly tell on this dark blackberry um, bliss. You can hardly see the shadow. You probably, I can barely see it, so I'm sure you can't. Um, so I stamped and embossed and then shifted my stamps and stamped the uh, Blackberry Bliss ink on them. And then what you have to do when you've embossed with the white powder, you have to clean off because some of the ink gets on your um, glossy white. And so you have to take a tissue or a cloth and get the ink off of your embossing, but it rubs off. And then here's our little gingerbread guy with the shadow, shadow stamping. And this one was just the very first card that I made this week. And um, I just stamped and embossed those white snowflakes and I did a little blending behind. Um, that's it. Oh my goodness. What do you think you're gonna try first? So I recommend that you um, get out your white craft pad, ink it up, and put it on your desk so that you remember to use it. And the very first thing that you should do is just stamp a background with anything. 
just stamp a background on some dark cardstock. Let's zoom out. We'll get all these cards in here. You can stamp your background and emboss it. That's classic. You can, if you have white embossing powder, you can emboss your white craft ink. And then of course you have embossing folders. So get out an embossing folder and use it on some dark cardstock. And then do that direct to paper technique or use the little um, sponge dauber to kind of highlight that and then find a fun little image and do some shadow stamping with your white craft ink and your dye ink of the same color cardstock and then of course make a little splatter splatter it on everything because you'll love it it's so pretty i especially love the splatters on this um Blackberry Bliss, they look pink. They really take up the color, um, or maybe it's purple, but they take up the color of the cardstock so nicely. All right, I hope that you're inspired to um, try these basic techniques with the uh, White Craft ink, and um, there will be a part two at some point where we're gonna do some more things with White Craft ink because it has it's very versatile. Um, so I'm going to take some time to read the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Tell me what your um, first technique that you're going to try. That's the first time you liked Azure Afternoon. You'll have to give it a try, Sandy. Thank you, Karen. Kathy, you need to get in the craft room immediately. Yes. Thank you, Holly. Hi, Judy. Hi, Donna. Hello, Karen. Yes. I Are you talking about these, Karen? Same layout, colors, you know, it's just like, I don't know, you, it, you probably have a favorite, right? Hi, Peggy. Hi, Joanna. Johanna. Thank you so much. You guys are funny. Lynn likes the pretty peacock one, yes. Yes, instead of using your finger, that's great, Sandra, thank you. So when you're flicking and you're splattering, if you um, if you have something a little bit harder, like, like your bone folder or um, a ruler, it'll you can hit the pen a little bit harder and it makes a little bit different kind of splatters. That's a good tip. Thank you. <laughs> I don't panic anymore, Melanie. You, I know life is just, you know what, we're making cards here. It's a craft. We can't panic. We have, we just fix it, right? Hey, Sandy from Quincy. You're not that far from me. Oh, you guys are awesome. I hope that you will get your craft pad out and uh, give it a try and then come share your cards on our Facebook group, Robin's Really Super Stampers. And we will ooh and ah over what you create because that's what we do. All right. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Happy Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. And until next time, it'll be December when I see you again, December 1st. Come back and join me again. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye.